Taylor level one student for Dancing for Him and today I'm talking about creative worship. This is an excellent DVD that goes along with the book of the same name. And Pastor Lynn discovered as she traveled throughout the nation and perhaps the world that dance teams did a lot of repetition and needed creative ideas added to their dances so they wouldn't become boring or repetitive to the audience. So the audience to whom the dance team was supposed to be ministering wouldn't check out so that the Lord would keep their their interest and be able to work more deeply in those hearts throughout the whole song, not just part of the song. And as I've learned from her, uh, beginnings and endings are important. So she covers throughout her excellent materials in this school, not only just the main part of the dance, but the preparation from praying and seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance every step of the way to entrances, to the main body of the dance, to exits, and she says in some of her teachings also that exits can be up to, I believe, 40% of the dance. So she covers everything. And in this excellent DVD, there's lots of creative ideas. And I'm going to talk about about three of those today. Let me list a few more, though. She talks about mirroring, echoing, body sculpting, planned spontaneity, uh, background foreground, unison and movement. Let's see, group shapes, reflecting and probably a couple more I can't remember right now. But again, if you'll get the DVD and the book, they'll work together in, in succession and symbiotic energy and just start allowing the Lord to stimulate your creativity and bring a lot more to enhance the enjoyment and the effectiveness of your dance team. Now, it is the anointing that makes us truly effective. We don't ever want to take the credit for ourselves, and we don't want to get into performance mode. It's Him, and we give Him all the glory. We seek Him, and we ask Him. But He does use practical things, practical teaching, to teach us moves that He can take and just enhance and do wonderful life-changing things with. So it's really all about Him. We are just willing vessels that practice and utilize uh, practical things, the creative techniques and tips that Pastor Lynn has gained through her 40 plus years of training and dance. And we give them to the Master and he puts his touch on them and does wonderful things to help people know him and be saved and healed and delivered and transformed and freed. So hallelujah, we get to be part of this. Alright, I'm going to demonstrate three of these. Or actually really just, I really don't have a team, but I'm going to teach you how to do them or how to teach a team to do them in just a minute. Hi, Tanya Taylor. Now, let me explain just a few of the things that I learned in creative worship. First is mirroring and echoing. Now, as Pastor Lynn says, you don't want the whole team doing the same thing, and really, if even two people are doing the same thing, which is called mirroring or copying, then only one is really needed. In other words, it could get really boring really fast. So mirroring is a technique where if I did this, then the next person beside me would do the same thing at the same time. We'd both be doing this at the same time. Or this, or this, or anything else. In other words, I would do something and they would copy it at the same time. I'd do it slow enough for them to do exactly what I'm doing. That is used mainly in practice. But then there's something called echoing that's very similar to that, just a little different, where I would do this in like one, two, three, four count, and then the next person would do the same thing, five, six, seven, eight. That would be called echoing. In other words, they would do it in a delayed response, but they do the same thing. It looks really pretty when you have a group doing it to me, and in fact, I like to see mirroring uh, in a group, but Again, that's mainly for practice. So echoing is the same thing as mirroring, only echoing is the last four, the last half of the beats, the five through eight beats. So if I did this, one, two, three, four, then the next person would go five, six, seven, eight. And so you can do that with any kind of move anywhere. And you can also do that at varying levels, which is another term I learned. So, if, for instance, if I did this one, two, three, four, and the other person was going to echo me, they could also incorporate a varying level, which means simply what it says, that you have a different level. And for instance, it would be down here going five, six, seven, eight. 
So you have me up here, one, two, three, four, holding while they did the five, six, seven, eight. But there would be five, six, seven, eight down here. So you'd have one of us up here, and one of us down here. And it's really cool with a group where you have a lot of people at different levels, maybe half of them echoing the other, or maybe even more than that, echoing at different times. It's just really a neat effect. And again, we give God all the glory. He puts the super on our natural. Um, so we learned mirroring, echoing, and varying levels so far. Another thing is unison movement. One thing I found unique about this is that unison movement, from what I understand from Hester Lynn, is done just from the waist up. So instead of incorporating the whole body, it's really done from the face, I mean the waist up. So if I was doing this, then if others were going to echo me, and do it at various levels, they might start waving after this, again, just from the waist up. Or they might doing, start doing other things and a different movement, but only at the waist up. Our feet would be stationary until, as a group, of course, we all moved and traveled. But then the focus in the unison movement would be on the waist up. Then there's planned spontaneity. That can be good for any dance. Um, I think I also learned that in prophetic dance, planned spontaneity is not an oxymoron because again we pray these things through, we see what the Holy Spirit wants to do and we make a plan. It's wisdom to make a plan and He can take that plan and He can change it at a moment's notice and we go with the flow which is spontaneity. But what Pastor Lynn means if I understand correctly is we have a plan, a basic outside outline of a plan that can actually put a dance together very quickly especially if the dance team hasn't had time to prepare or doesn't know what music is going to be played or something, you have a basic outline such as she'll say, okay, you two take these two red flags and you go down that aisle. You other two take this red billow and go down this aisle when the music starts. And then three of you walk up here with the white streamers and come on the stage. See how quick that was? That's a plan. Now within that plan there's spontaneity. She'd say, okay, the rest of you do what you want. You can use mirroring or echoing or varying levels or body sculpting which is another term in the creative worship book and DVD and you can do it as the Holy Spirit leads among and around these others that I have given the plan. So all that's called spon plan spontaneity. So we've talked about mirroring, echoing, varying levels, unison movement and plan spontaneity. Those are all in the DVD and the book Creative Worship. Enjoy!